Hey guys, Volen here. Today I'm going to show you a little bit more of understanding drawing. If you don't know what understanding drawing is, a large part of it is this image that's behind me right now. It's been my attempt to try and provide a big picture view, some context for people who are not necessarily just starting out, but people who are struggling to try and figure out all of these complex interactions between different skills, different levels of skill, different components of theory and, and knowledge, all of these different things that need to come together in order to be able to go all the way from, from the very beginning of observation, a lot of times we get stuck in copying, all the way to imagination work and the different levels and the different skills in between of what it takes to be able to produce work like that. I've gotten some good feedback on the course so far. I've had a few ratings on Gumroad on the course page and there's also been some reviews coming in. People have been emailing me so I've gotten some good feedback and I couldn't be any happier. I was nervous to put this thing out there because really it's not a typical tutorial. It isn't really anything like that. It's something different and I really wanted to see how people would respond. So I'll play you a video now of what's included in the course. So these are some of the things that I'll walk you through in this course. I'll take you through what I call our roadmap of understanding drawing. This is my attempt to try and provide context for drawing, to try and break it down into these various levels and different skills that make up each and every level. Then we also have traps. These are things that we very often get wrong as beginners. We pretty much share a lot of the same path, really. So a lot of the mistakes that one of us makes, we don't need to always be doing the same thing over and over. Although there's just no way to avoid these things sometimes, but hopefully you'll get to spend less time in those traps than I did. I lived in traps for a very long time. And then we also have maps. This is essentially like a reminder for some of the things that we'll be talking about today. I'm envisioning this roadmap as something that you refer to from time to time, check in about what it is that you're doing, how things are going. And it's like a checklist trying to remind yourself of these things that even though you know you shouldn't be doing, maybe you started doing or things that you should be doing, maybe you forgot. So this is how I'm seeing this. So we'll look at all of these levels individually. We're going to go into each and every one and investigate what are the skills that are responsible for it? What are the prerequisites in the bigger picture of drawing? What exactly does it serve? And if you want to move from there, if you want to be going towards this imagination stage at the very end, what are the further things that you need to be building? And it's also absolutely fine if that is not your goal. If you just want to be in observation, for instance, that is in no way lesser and it will then serve you to spend, let's say 90% of your time over here and then only invest in the other skills just as much as would serve you because you would still benefit from having a bigger picture view so that you know that you're not missing out. Or if there's another skill that you could possibly use that would improve your art, then it's important to know that it's there. The way that I wanted to organize the levels is so they lead from observation to imagination. I also wanted to structure them in such a way so that everything that is learned with the earlier levels will be used in every level after that. A lot of times as beginners, we'll learn things out of sequence. We'll see something or hear something from somewhere. And because we're not good at that thing, we'll start training that, not realizing its true importance in the bigger scheme of things, in the bigger picture of drawing, of art. So I've tried to make things as much as possible fit together so that you're able to use immediately what it is that you learn and keep building on top of that with all the further levels. Each level is also associated with skills that we've separated into mechanical and perceptual, and you will need to be trained these in order to be able to unlock the next level. I do have to make it clear here that the training is largely up to you. In this series, we covered the context. We go through all of these various components that we're going to get to in a second. And I've tried to outline as much as possible the things that I've done at various stages and what it is that you need to work on in order to progress. I do believe with all the information provided, you'll be able to easily structure what it is that you need to do as we go through many, many different examples and also what I've had to do at the same levels in order to progress. We'll also spend some time talking about skill building. It's a essential to understand that really almost everything that we do on a regular basis in a way gets converted to a skill, which is why it's incredibly important to not only read theory, but to practice it the same way that you would practice skills in order to convert that theory into a skill so that you don't have to think about it, but you're able to just execute it. I'll also supply you with quite a few books on that subject in your resources file. We're going to have a look at a variety of drawings from more contemporary, more current illustrators and artists. And we're going to look back to the masters as well. And we're going to try and pull a thread through everything. Drawing is by definition, a part of image making. So a lot of these things that we'll be talking about, they'll apply not only to drawing, but image making in general, which means that they will translate into painting as well. We'll also talk about visual language. We'll try and understand why and how images work in the first place. What medium you choose to work in is completely up to you. 
These same things apply just as much to traditional as they do to digital mediums. Drawing is drawing. It's about the thinking, not about what tool you're using to create marks with. It's not about tricks, it's not about secrets or anything like that. It's purely about thinking, about principles, problem solving, these are the things that are truly important. I think it's easy enough to think about an image like this and think about why it works as an illusion, why we can look at it and understand what it is that it's showing us because it's realistic. It's how we see the world. It's what we see when we look around. But something like this, I think, is trickier to get. There's no shading here. There's no form the way that we see it. So how come this works as well? How come an image with no lines whatsoever and an image almost entirely made up of different lines and shapes, how come these work? Because we think of both of those types as drawing but they're also so different. And then finally, how come images like these work where there seems to be no apparent logic to where the lines go and they just seem to be crossing all over the entire image? Does that just mean that if we want to make interesting images like these, should we just scribble around? Is it just random? How does this happen? Why does this work? So we're going to try and deconstruct what's the underlying thread between these. We're also going to look at when things go wrong. We're going to talk about what type of illusion that line creates and when we're breaking that illusion. We're also going to look at how some of our initial ideas about drawing might not be serving us. For instance, trying to always get the outline of something as a way to draw it isn't a very effective illusion because we're essentially copying the effect of something. We're not understanding the structure. We're not understanding how it was originated in the first place, which then prevents us from being able to draw our own things. We're only then constrained into copying, into only being able to translate what's already in front of us, but we can't originate anything. So we're going to have a look at what happens when we're obsessed with outline and when we outline everything, how we break the illusion and how we can make more sophisticated illusions. We're going to talk about how drawing is a compound skill made up of many different sub skills, but it can also get tangled with light, which I would really like to separate it from because it would allow us to train this structural thinking that then enables painting to be easier, enables lighting to be easier. So we're going to think of drawing like this. We're going to think of it as part structure over on this side, and we're going to think of it as part light, which then creates the final images that we see, which would be a combination of the two. They would look something like this, a part of structure, a part of light, and then coming together. This is what we see when we go into the world. We see what we're calling here form. We're seeing structure with applied light onto it. But in order to create the light, it's far more important to have the structure correct underneath, which is where we'll spend the majority of our time in understanding structure and understanding basic volumes, getting more familiar with them, then building them up into more complex structures. Being able to do this type of thinking, this type of analytical thinking, then opens up the door to imaginative work. We're gonna have a look at what happens with my own work when I haven't followed my own advice earlier on. We're gonna see when we try to do too many things, when we're not comfortable with structure yet, when we're not even aware of it, but we're also coupling that with light, with rendering, with painting, and we have so many things going against us at this stage. I will take you through my early work and show you how I went through these same exact levels that we're defining here today. And we're actually gonna start from an even earlier level, from an even earlier stage, which is symbolic drawing. So we're going to go all the way from symbolic drawing to imagination work. And I will take you through all the various levels in between observation, understanding, feeling form, knowledge, design, subject, imagination. We're also going to spend a lot of time talking about cause and effect, why certain illusions are more potent than other illusions, why an image, for instance, translated into one type of drawing isn't as effective as another type of drawing. We're going to talk about where these lines and shapes come from, what they stand for, and then understanding the purpose, the reason behind them. We're going to talk about how these aren't just two-dimensional silhouetted shapes, they're actually a cause and effect relationships. These are created by form receiving light and blocking light in certain ways. And we're going to talk about and have a look at how 3D software sees the world and why it's possible for it to rotate objects, to shade them in various different angles. We're going to talk about this same type of thinking, this understanding, this structure. And this type of thinking applies to any type of style. It doesn't matter how realistic or how stylized and cartoony it may be, it still applies to any type of drawing, which is why we're looking at this great variety of images from comic books to master drawings to paintings. They all have the same underlying drawing thinking. As a bonus, we're going to spend a bit more time in the observation and understanding levels, the first two levels, because beginnings are always the hardest. So I've tried to provide you with a little bit more on those two. I'll show you how shape as a communication tool is incredibly important. And again, we'll talk about shape as actually a consequence of three dimensional volume. I'll show you what happens when you change and distort things without wanting to, how we're changing the expression of these volumes, how we're changing the structure of objects, how we're making them read a different way. 
Here's another example of the same thing here. We'll also talk about degrees of training these various things. We don't need to be copying machines if we're doing observational work. There's a lot of liberties that are often taken with images that are creative because they're there to serve a story. We're never there to just copy things without purpose or without understanding. We'll also spend a bit more time in perspective because it's very important. Again, this isn't a how-to, but I will outline some resources for you that I found very useful. I will also talk you through some of the mistakes that I made. I really overvalued theory a lot. I spent far too much time going through far too many books. It would have been far better if I invested it in practice at this stage. So we're going to break perspective down into what makes it. We're going to have camera and object building, which is essentially the two main things that it's responsible for. And then we'll split it into two different types of perspective. We'll have this feeling form that we're talking about, which here we've called sketching perspective right now. And we have technical perspective, which are the rules of perspective. I'll also offer you once again my going through these same materials and these same changes of going from technical perspective into feeling form. And I'll also have this brief diagram of training perspective, which is cyclical, same as our other levels. We're also going to have a look at some sketching demos. These will be fully narrated and explained for you. We're going to look through some different styles and do some of the drawings several times over in order to explore the ideas of process to see that regardless of subject matter, we're really using the same type of thinking. And to a very large extent, we're using the same process of establishing what's important first and only then proceeding to go into detail. We're going to have a look at some perspective sketching, but really we're also going to talk about how perspective is always active. It's one of our key levels in the progression towards imagination. We're also going to play around with some of our drawings and not necessarily stick to the reference 100%. We're going to talk about how that's possible through the use of structural thinking, and we're going to see multiple examples of that as well. And we're also going to do a drawing where we separate the structure from the light. We're not necessarily going to copy what it is that we see, but first we're going to separate and draw the structure. After that, we'll put in our shadow shapes that are going to define volumetrically how the light would interact with our structure. And finally, we'll push the same image a little bit further forward in order to be able to talk about some further concepts like the application of light and how it's very similar to what it is that we do with drawing because we need to apply the same type of structural thinking in order to calculate where the light would go. And we're also going to critique these. After each and every drawing, we're going to talk about how we could have done it better, what are certain things that I didn't do as well, and what I would do differently if I could do it again. As a beginner, it's often difficult, if not impossible, to grasp a concept the first time you hear it. So with that in mind, I've tried to have the most important concepts gone over several times. We'll have a first exposure to a concept, then later in the course, we'll be going over it multiple times with different contexts, different examples. So there is repetition when it comes to the most important things. And I'm hoping that this helps to provide more clarity for some of these concepts that we're talking about that seem quite tricky when you're first exposed to them. Feel free, if you're the same way that I am, to just go over the videos double speed or triple speed and slow down for the portions that are more important for you. Throughout our time together, You'll hear me refer to the teaching of Steve Houston, Glenn Vilpu, and Bill Perkins. I mention their names very often. There's a reason for that. They've been absolutely instrumental in my own understanding of drawing and my own improvement. I spent an entire year with them and I use everything I've learned from them on a daily basis and I still have a lot to go through and to train. So I highly recommend if you're looking to develop your skills further to give them a try. You can use my code at checkout to get a discount. It's 15% off your entire subscription. So each and every month it's 15% off. There's a free trial before you get started. So there's nothing to lose. I hope you find these helpful. I hope this is something that serves you in the years to come as you are progressively improving more and more of your skill set but also sometimes backtracking and tightening up things that you may have missed the first time around. I hope that my mistakes serve to make your path a little bit easier. And I would also like to thank you here for your support. Your supporting this video, this series, makes it possible for me to invest more time in serving people who are starting or have struggled for a really long time and are not sure how to progress. I get messages and comments like these on a daily basis. If you have any feedback, any concerns, any questions, please shoot me an email. I'd be happy to help. All right, so with that, let's get started. All right, I hope that seems interesting. I hope you find it helpful. Also, finally, I managed to, I know you guys have been asking about this image, this what I call our roadmap. So I finally uploaded this. It also comes with another image. It's free for you guys, so you can just download it. But if you want to, you can also support my work through that. This thing really took me quite a while to record so a few hundred hours I put into this thing editing it trying to figure out all the different things that could be 
interpret it in multiple ways and try to annotate everything and put little footnotes and things like that of when I'm explaining something if it could also be understood in a different way or if there's multiple applications for something I tried to think through a lot of these things that I would have found helpful when I was starting out so now that the few hundred hours of this thing is over I'm restarting my practice getting back into it doing a lot of painting, working on the things that I'm not very good at, that I need to work on. So I'll be making a lot of paintings and I'll be trying to pretty much do finished projects primarily. So you can see some practice on Instagram. I post right now I'm doing daily stories on studies that I'm doing. So if you'd like to see some of that, you can just follow me on Instagram. I also need to get to ArtStation. I have a lot of stuff that I haven't uploaded for a while, but I've just been so busy with doing understanding drawing and everything around that that needs to happen in order to just upload it. I've been getting a lot of emails and questions from people. So just doing a lot of extra things, but practice is always a priority. So I'll keep you guys updated and you can follow me on ArtStation. Station, Instagram, those are the best places. Facebook as well, if you'd like to see some of the work. If you find these videos helpful, please give them a like. This is one of the ways that you can support the channel with. Subscribe if you would like to see more. New Masters Academy, who I've already mentioned, I did 10,000 drawings with them, primarily Steve Houston and Glenn Vilpu. Amazing instructors, decades of experience, really phenomenal teachers, highly recommend them. You can use code VOLENSIKE at checkout for 15% each and every month for the entire duration of your subscription. And you can also check out Understanding Drawing. It's live. Feedback has so far been great, which I couldn't be happier. And I'm looking forward to getting more feedback. If you've gotten this already, please leave it a rating on the Gumroad page, on the course page. That will be a massive help. If you'd like to, send me a review. That would also be great. Or send me some questions. Let me know if there's something that I can help you with. You're supporting my work. I'm more than happy to support you further. So if there's anything that I can be of help with, please send me an email. The link to the free images, to the roadmap and the extra image are going to be in the description. I will make sure that these have gone up by the time I upload the video. Thank you guys very much. Keep that practice going and I'll see you soon.